this video we're going to be doing an applied optimization problem where we've been told that a candy company sells x thousand candy bars at a price of p of x equals 62 minus x over 12 cents per bar. So this function here, p of x, models the price of each candy bar. Then the question asks us how many bars should they sell if they want to maximize their revenue. So we've got a candy company, they're trying to maximize their revenue. How many candy bars should they sell in order to do that? Well, with applied optimization problems, the first thing we always want to do is look for the question and figure out what we've been asked to maximize or what we've been asked to minimize. So in this case, we want to go ahead and underline here, maximize revenue, right? That's going to be our goal. We've been asked to maximize the revenue. Because we've been asked to maximize revenue, that means we're going to need a function for revenue. So whatever you've been asked to maximize or minimize, that's what you're going to need to find a function for. And you're going to need to get that function in terms of of one variable. So we need a revenue function. What do we know about revenue? Well, we should know that revenue is always equal to the number of things that we sell times the price that we sell them for. So if you think of a simple example, if I'm selling apples for 25 cents a piece and I sell four of them, I'm selling four apples at 25 cents a piece, four times 25 cents gives me a dollar. My revenue then is one dollar. So revenue is always the number you sell multiplied by the price that you sell each one of them for. So this is going to be our model for the revenue function. We need to plug in some value here. We've already been told that we're selling x thousand candy bars, so we're just going to use x for the number that we're selling here. And we've been given a function for p of x, so we're going to need to plug that in for p of x into our revenue function. So we're going to say revenue function, revenue of x, the amount of revenue we make when we sell x candy bars, or in this case x thousand candy bars, is going to be equal to x thousand candy bars multiplied by the price function 62 minus x over 12. Now we want to simplify this as much as possible. Our goal here, because we already have this in one variable, we need it in one variable, but then once we've got it there, our goal is going to be to simplify this so that we can take the derivative of this function that we've been asked to maximize or minimize. So here we're going to distribute the x and we're going to get 62x minus x squared over 12. Now again, whatever you've been asked to maximize or minimize, once you get it into a simplified form like this, you're going to want to take the derivative of that function. So we need the derivative of the revenue function. So the derivative of the revenue function we'll call r prime of x. And when we take the derivative of the right hand side here, the derivative of 62x will be 62. The derivative of negative x squared over 12 will we'll bring the exponent of 2 out in front. So we'll get minus 2x over 12, or we can call this 62 minus x over 6. Now once you have the derivative function, your next step is always going to be to set this derivative function equal to 0. So we're going to go ahead and set this equal to 0. We want to solve for our variable. So in order to solve for the variable, we'll multiply through every term on the left and right hand side of the equal sign by 6 in order to get this x by itself. So when we multiply by 6, 0 by 6 is still going to be 0. 62 times 6 is going to be 372, so we'll get 372. And then when we multiply negative x over 6 by 6, we're going to get the 6s to cancel and we'll just get that negative x. Then if we add x to both sides, what we find is x is equal to 372. Now this process of setting the derivative equal to 0 and solving for x is called finding critical points or finding potential critical points. So x equals 372 now is a potential critical point of our revenue function. And what that means is a point potentially where the function changes direction from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. This is the only critical point that we found, so this is likely the value that maximizes revenue, but we need to verify that this does in fact maximize revenue. So what we're going to do now is take this value and we're going to plot it on a number line like this. And this is always really simple, but I just draw this diagram because it keeps things clear for me. So we've got a number line like this. Put x equals 372 right in the middle. So x equals 372. We need to test the derivative function on both sides of x equals 372. So we want to pick numbers on either side of x equals 372, like x equals 370 
and x equals 374. And we're always going to be testing this in our first derivative, in this case, r prime. So we'll just go ahead and indicate here that this is going to be tested on r prime. It's called the first derivative test because we're going to test it in the first derivative. Now, if x equals 372 is the value of x that maximizes revenue, then what we should expect to get is a positive value when we plug 370 into the derivative function and a negative value when we plug 374 into the derivative function. Because if we get a positive positive value on the left hand side, then we know that the derivative is increasing on the left. If we get a negative value on the right hand side of this critical point, we know the function is decreasing on the right. So when we have increasing, decreasing, then we get this up and down and x equals 372 is the height, which means that it is a maximum. So what we want to do is plug 370 into the derivative function. So r prime of 300 70 is going to be equal to 62 minus 370 divided by 6. And the exact value of this is not important. What's important is whether or not this is a positive or negative value. And if we do this arithmetic, what we see is that we get a positive value. If we plug 374 into the derivative, we get r prime of 374 is equal to 62 minus 374 divided by 6. And again, the exact value is not important. What's important is whether or not this is positive or negative. And when we do this arithmetic, we see that we get a negative value. So what we can say then is that when x is 370, anything to the left of x equals 372, the derivative is positive, which means that the original function is going to be increasing. Everything to the right of x equals 372, the derivative is negative, which means the original function is decreasing. So I like to draw this diagram here. We have positive on the left, negative on the right, so we're going up, then down. And what we can see then visually here is that x equals 372 becomes this local maximum. So with the first derivative test, we've proven that x equals 372 is a value that maximizes revenue. So then once we've shown this, we always want to make sure with an applied optimization problem that we go back to the question that we've been asked, because the answer we need to give is not always just the value of x. So in this particular example, how many candy bars should they sell in order to maximize revenue? Well, a company sells x thousand candy bars. We said that x is equal to 372. So the company needs to sell 372,000 candy bars in order to maximize their revenue, and this is therefore the answer that we should give.